Jim, if you would, this morning, a very special couple of requests. Number one, be sure to remember uh, Sister Judy. She goes back thirsty, and uh, the medicine she's been taking is sort of not doing its job like it ought to, and maybe they'll find something better for you come this Thursday. Also remember Brother Danny's wife. Uh, she's got a little place, I believe, on her leg, sort of cancer. Maybe they're going to maybe do some surgery or something, biopsy. So remember uh, Tracy, Danny's wife. And then uh, Sister Rita Tummins called me uh, last night and said to remember uh, little Tony. Uh, he's got gout real bad, been very painful. And uh, so be sure to remember him and the little fella's been having his hands operate on. Maybe next week or two they're going to do the other one and he'll be in good shape then. And then everything that's on our prayer sheet that's several weeks old, we're hopeful that maybe it won't be too long until we can sort of get that updated. And But uh, just keep praying for what we have there. Would there be other requests? Every heart and mind clear. Flying. Well, let's do remember that for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other requests? Brother Bill, lead us in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are. Thank you, Lord, again. Be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for these that have come today. We pray thy blessings upon each one. We pray today, Lord, as we uh, uh, end the weekend of the Independence Day, and thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we still enjoy. And Lord, we just pray, Father, this morning that you bless uh, these requests that we've heard today, Lord, and many that are on our, yeah. our uh, prayer, prayer list. Lord, just help us, Lord, to God pray one for another. Yes, Lord, and, and uh, we just pray for these specials this morning, for Tracy. Pray for her, Father, she be better. Lord, we pray for Judy. Lord, we pray for Linda's request. And Lord, we pray for all the others, Lord, that are on that. Lord, you know everyone and you know everything. Father, help us in these times in which we live, Lord. Always, first of all, to look up to you and pray. We know that prayer avails much. And Lord, so I believe that all Christians with us. Pray and humble themselves, Lord, and pray that this thing might uh, come to a head for long. Yeah. Lord, we don't know whether a virus is going to get us now or the the radicals. So we uh, we need the Lord in times like these. I believe that uh, President Trump was put there for times like these, and I pray God that you bless him and his Vice President Pence more than the government. Yes. Father that still holds on to belief that uh, God is still uh, the same today, yesterday, and Lord that God can pull us through wars such as World War II and others. Lord that He can take care of this and He's still in charge of everything. Have your precious way. I pray now to go with us. Lord, we just pray that uh, God would give you honor this morning to everything. Said and done. Thank you for all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You will be seated for the gift. Page 714. Yeah. <laughs> 
official welcome to you this morning. It's good to see each one of you uh, here today. And we know we've got a lot of people not uh, coming out. And I understand this virus is certainly, uh, i tell you what, particularly early folks get it can kill you. We hope and pray our folks will stay safe. I know in my little daily devotions, we've been remembering our church family, others as well, but we know how uh, dangerous this is, but we're grateful and appreciative that each one of you made it uh, this way this morning. God bless you for being here. Also this morning as we're dismissed, if uh, you have uh, tithes or offerings you want to give, we place the offering plates at back on the table. Just drop them in back there and uh, Brother Tony will take care of them uh, at, at the proper time, you know. And also keep in mind, we're gonna continue our service at 11 o'clock on Sunday for a little while longer until this thing sort of clears up. Several churches have gone back to having their services outside again. Uh, but if we, as long as we stay like we are, sort of spread out and do what we're trying to do. And if you feel like you'd like to wear a mask, you feel free to, feel free to wear one. We'd want you to do that if you feel that you need to do this. So stay faithful and God will honor us, of course, uh, for uh, our faithfulness. At this time, I want us to stand and we're going to do our pledge to the flag. And uh, Sister Linda gave out a lot of papers, if you don't know it. I said it back here because Snooks and Sue's going to sing and they need that up there. So I didn't move it up this time. Everybody stand and let's do our pledge this morning to the American flag. Together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing, we'll do our pledge to our Christian flag. Now, Sister Linda gave out some papers. You know, we don't do this often, as many of us haven't got them memorized, so she was kind enough to, Judy had these put together uh, for us. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all uh, who believe. God bless you, and you may be seated. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Brother Snooks, would you and Sister Sue come sing for us this morning? There, yeah, come on up here and sing for us. Linda, you want to sing this morning? Okay, then uh, you all just come on and what do we what I always say? Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. oh yeah, you're making I was bragging on you this week, so now you gotta get on up here. Just love 
What will it be? 
just now. Have <laughs> <laughs> a right answer. Yeah. He's cheering you on. <laughs> well, I need it this morning. I, I hear that. No, he said fine. around my house last night and I live in the boondock. It sounded like a war zone. Uh, kids shooting so many firecrackers. Just before Brother Jim and I are going to sing here in just a moment, let me read you this little note. Uh, some of you may remember Sister Martha Coleman. She came for quite a while and sat back about where Seuss is sitting. Uh, and then her husband uh, got cancer and was down, finally uh, passed away and she's had some physical problems. And she sends us about every week or two a, a nice little note along with a little uh, her ties to our church. She says, Dear Brother Tommy in church, hope this finds you well and all the church family doing well. Thank you for praying for my granddaughters. Her two granddaughters, uh, Christina and Rebecca, both have cancer and undergoing treatments, you know, one in Atlanta and one in Nashville. She says, uh, Thank you, Brother Tommy, uh, for the little books. I'm always sending little booklets and stuff to read and a little encouragement because she's got a lot of physical problems. So thank you for the little books. I enjoy reading them uh, very, very much. Uh, Christine and Rebecca are still uh, not very much better. I just keep praying for I know that God can do anything. He has helped me so many, many times for a lot of years. God bless all of you. The church family, I hope all of you have a wonderful 4th of July. My love to all, uh, Sister Martha. And I thought, she always sends us a little check, you know, tie, her, her ties. Uh, Brother Jim, come up, man, you'll do a special this morning. We finally found the words. Didn't we? Hey, by the way, they, and they were in the book, won't they? <laughs> Jim always helps, helps me out. Uh, You will sing over there, over here. Where you want to sing? Oh, anywhere. <laughs> we get over here. You got everything lined up? At least we found the words. Yeah. <clears throat>
And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I won't have long to stay. My work is nearly done. I'm happy now to say my race is almost run. So long my ears are set on heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Everyone get a hymn book and turn to 656, and let's all together sing that last verse. 656, this world is not my home, and I hope that is a true, true meaning in your heart this morning. The last verse, 656. I won't have long to say My work is nearly done I'm happy now to say My race is almost run So long my eyes are set On heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh Lord you know I have no friend like you if heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Thank you, Brother Jim, for letting me sing with you. How's that? <laughs> I think I had ears instead of eyes in that verse. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> That song once in a while, and that's a wonderful song. Got good words to it, you know. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn in your Bibles to the 139th Psalm. And uh, I'd like to say this morning, Happy Birthday, America. Amen. You know, that's what we're celebrating is uh, his birthday. And I, you know, I've, I've thought a lot about it. You take this, yesterday was July the 4th. In 1776, uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed. And this 1,500-page <coughs> document has guided our nation well for 244 years. And it grieves me to see these evil and wicked people who are rioting and burning and looting and doing evil and wicked things. And I can tell you this morning, God is not pleased. I always think about what our first president said, George Washington, who was a, a great a patriot. He made this statement. He said, you know, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. I go along with that 150%. The Bible says in the 139th Psalm, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. There is not a word in my tongue, but, O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Uh, it is high. I cannot attain to it whether I shall go from thy spirit or whether, whether shall I flee from thy presence. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. <clears throat> if I make my bed in hell or Sheol, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the earth, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Father, we thank you this morning so very much. It's a great honor to call America uh, our home. We're grateful and appreciative, dear Lord, for the way that you have blessed and helped me and my family uh, through the years. And uh, we always try to have a little birthday for our children. They were growing up and coming along. And it's good this morning that we can do our pledges to the flag. 
<clears throat> as Brother Jim led us in a couple of we call old time patriotic songs. And I pray that it might set our thought process to thinking because we know that God is able to help us in every situation that we have to face. Help us now in this service to be mindful of what this service is all about. It's about you, Lord, because you are worthy and deserving. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. Let me just share a little thought with you. You know, God sees everything. This is sort of a sobering thought when you think about it this morning. And I hope the Holy Spirit will take it and help it register in your heart and in your mind. You, you know, we might live this morning, let's just put it this way, in the deepest basement. We might live in the highest apartment. No matter where we are, God is there. Amen. You think about that. Uh, you know, he, he can see us because he's all-knowing and everywhere present. And you know, this morning, God sees America. You've heard me say this, and I will say it again. You and I have been honored and privileged to live in the golden years of this great state, this great nation. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be able to uh, live much longer. I believe the Lord's coming back, number one. We may die and go on to be with the Lord, but either way, we know this. God has his eye upon everything that's taking place uh, today. You know what? Solomon made a, a statement in Proverbs chapter 15 in verse 3. He said, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding the evil and the good. You see, God has all knowledge. <clears throat> he knows this morning the intention of our heart. And that is to come and pray and sing and, and worship him and partake of his word. He knows that. But this morning, don't lose sight of something. All these people that are tearing, trying to tear down what our forefathers built, God sees that. You, you keep that in mind. You take our forefathers who sailed from the old country. Uh, many of them who came were, were godly people. Puritans, Quakers, Baptists, all, of all flavors you might say. But they came with something in mind to build a great society where they would be free to worship the Lord according to the dictates of their own heart and mind rather than what they were experiencing in the far country. And I'd say through the years with all of our ups and with all of our downs, we'd all have to say we've had more ups than we've had downs. God has had his hand on this nation. <clears throat> and it troubles me to see what's taking place today. We have a group of evil and wicked people. Looks like they have no plan. They don't have anything to offer. They're just simply radicals going hither and yon, tearing and destroying from city to city. I wonder why they're not working. There's plenty of work available. I wonder why they're not in school or in college somewhere. I thought, to give a little thought to that, you know. And you stop and think, Solomon had... The right words when he says the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Not only that, he's beholding the evil as well as the good. Always remember something. God has all knowledge. You take in Luke chapter 12 and verse 2. Jesus said, for there is nothing covered. Think of that. That shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. You know, stop and think. A little wonderful illustration of of God is paying attention to what's going on down here today. You go back to the book of Joshua chapter 7 and a beautiful example of that is a man by the name of Achan. Achan was a man who, who fought uh, in the army of Joshua. Uh, he was there when they uh, uh, took Jericho and when uh, they all went into the city and they'd been given explicit orders from God through Joshua. When, when the city is taken all the special things like silver, gold, things of this nature. One day when God helps us to build that permanent temple, these things will be placed in that particular uh, area. So don't take nothing, you know. So they, they take the city. And here, here's the story. Uh, when the city is captured, uh, they all go into the city. But Achan, he happened to go into a place and he saw a, a garment like he had never had to wear. He saw silver. Uh, he saw gold, which he took 
unbeknowing to Joshua, unbeknowing to uh, his fellow soldiers, he hid the silver, gold, and garments and took it to his tent and dug a hole and put it in a hole in the tent. He hid it uh, because he didn't want Joshua to find out because he had orders through Joshua whom the Lord had given to Joshua about these particular things. But you see something this morning, and if you, you, most of you know the story. Here's the thing, God was watching. Joshua didn't see him take that. His uh, uh, soldiers that was over him, for example, didn't see him take that. But God was watching. And God saw him take that. And you know what? In the end, he was destroyed with his whole family. Now, ain't that sad? Not only did Joshua, uh, not only did Achan lose his life, but his whole life, his whole family's life was taken from them because God was watching. You know, we're told in the book of 2 Chronicles, uh, uh, chapter 16 and verse 9, uh, these particular words, 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. Now listen to these words, if you would. The Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro uh, throughout the whole earth to show himself strong uh, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect. Achan's heart was not perfect. See, He went against the orders of what God had told him to do. And then we move, move forward a little bit in time, and we know a fellow who went through so much by the name of Job. And listen to what Job said. Job said, in a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. See, this stuff that they're doing today, they won't get away with it. They may think they will, but they won't. Because the eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Achan didn't get away with it. His family didn't get away with it. They, everyone, when Joshua found out and got the right information, he made sure his intelligence was right. And then they were stoned to death. Their life was taken. You know, that's, that's a bad thing. When you really stop, you know, and think about it. But not only that, you know, in my message here, if you will notice in our text for just a moment, look at verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, notice, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Uh, you know, David acknowledged that God knew all about him. And, and you see, God knows about all the situation that is taking place in America. I am not the prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I believe I've got a pretty good idea how this thing's going to come to a close. God is going to do one of two things. Number one, Jesus Christ is coming back and the church is going to be raptured. And all of those who are doing all these evil and terrible things are going to be left behind because they are violating the principles of this great nation and the word of God. Number two, God is going to swiftly bring down great judgment upon this nation if these who have authority do not pull the wool down on these people and straighten them out. I'll go along with the president, give them about 10 years in prison. Uh, that'll straighten them out, you know. But if you go back in the Old Testament, I've been a reader of the Old Testament for many, many years, and many of you have. And if you really stop and think about it, there were times when Israel came together and, and they really, really did well. Uh, their herds increased, their vineyards increased. Uh, the nation was worshiping truly to the Lord. Then after a while, they would drift away from God. And God would send a man of God to help them to be a prophet, to help them be able to see the need of turning back to God. And when they didn't follow the instructions of the Lord, something happened. There'd be a famine. Sometimes there'd be a uh, a, a devastating uh, flood, there was an earthquake, all kinds of terrible things happened to get their attention. And it may be today that 
these evil and wicked people who think that they're getting away with what they're doing, listen, God's got his eye on this situation. And somewhere, some way, down the line, God's going to intervene. And it'll either be with the judgment hand of God or either it'll be the rapture will take place. I don't know about you, but I'm like the song that we sang this morning. This is not my final home. My faith is anchored. Your faith is anchored securely in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they may burn the buildings and they may steal and loot and carry on. But one day when they step beyond this life in the eternal burning fire, flaming pits of an eternal everlasting hell and they're burning and crying out for mercy, there will be no mercy because they have just simply overstepped the rules and the word uh, of the word of God, you know. You, you know, David acknowledged that God knew all about him, for, for example. He under, he, you know, he made the statement that God even understood his thoughts. Think about that. He even understood that God heard every word that he spoke. David understood that God was acquainted with his walk in life. You, you know, we can hide things from God but he sees it. Achan hid that stuff in the hole of his tent and thought, thought, sure, boy, he's going to be a wealthy man, but it cost him, him and his family uh, his life, for example. And God saw every move that he made. Now think about this. God sees every move that you make and I make. He also sees the move of these rightest kind of people, uh, you know, because they're not, they're not, they're the devil's advocates. They're not godly people, you know, uh, for, for example. David concluded that there was no place. He came to a conclusion in his life. <clears throat> there was no place to hide from God. No matter where he went, he came to the conclusion that God would be there. David was convinced that God had a loving interest in him. And he said in the effect in verse 24 here of the text, he said, uh, you, if anything in my life is not pleasing to the Lord, here's what he said, you know, uh, lead me, forgive me and lead me in the way of forgiveness that I might go to heaven when this life comes uh, to a close. So we, we should recognize uh, that same truth and save and that same desire. You see, the Holy Spirit is faithful and the Holy Spirit will bring that truth uh, to our lives. Listen, for our spiritual well-being, you see, God is all-knowing. He knows everything that's going on. If, <clears throat> if you will notice, when I put on the board out there this week, I put on Happy Birthday America, and there are three things on the bottom. Number one is faith, family, and freedom. We live in a great nation this morning called America, and we're very blessed to know that God, and there's no question about it, has had his hand on this nation. You know, this nation was able to survive a civil war where more than 600,000 people lost their lives, brother against brother. But we came out of it, and today we're one nation uh, united. You, you know, there were several other wars in between. Then World War I came along, and America, and American called Doughboys went went to France and Germany and done a great part in bringing stability to world order at that time. And then World War II came along. And it looked like for a while that maybe Adolf Hitler, who was really an atheist, was going to conquer the world. But God had his hand on this nation. And God sent through this nation some of the finest young men and women this na nation ever produced. They're our heroes this morning. And they went to far distant lands. And there they fought and paid the supreme price that you and I might be able to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy this morning. Enjoy our families this morning. And apply our faith uh, this morning. And then came along the Vietnam War, the Korean War first. That's the war that I went to Korea. That's my brother and I both. But it came along. And America still stepped forward and kept the advance of communism from probably encircling the whole Asian theater. Then the Vietnam War 
came along. Same principle was true. And through all of this, we have so many of our sons and daughters who are buried in foreign lands. In many cases, their remains could, could never be recognized, but God recognized them. And this morning, we owe so much to so many who've done so much that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have today. I have a, the reason since I've been here, every Veterans Day, I've always tried to do something a little special for the veterans, and not because I am a veteran, but because I realize what they've done, where they've been, and the sacrifices they made uh, to help us to keep our nation where it is today. But today we have a group of people who don't know the Lord. All they know is, is burn, riding, bad language, uh, promiscuity lifestyle. They're wicked, evil people. But you remember something. God has his eyes on this situation. And in his choosing, he'll bring this to a satisfactory close. I believe that, of course, I'm not the president. If I was, I'd take care of that. I'd send the troops in there and I'd, I'd arrest about half of them, stick them in jail for about 10 years. Uh, you know, they wouldn't be out here doing what they're doing. But so many mom and pop people who worked hard all their life and, and built a little restaurant or a little business and uh, church going people doing good, not bothering nobody. And these people went in and burned and looted and stole, in some cases, even beat these people. That's a terrible thing. But I'm going to tell you this morning, and I know God and God knows me. He does have an answer to this situation. You stay tuned. And I'm telling you, it's going to come to a satisfactory conclusion because on the birthday of America, 244 years, a great piece of paper, Thomas Jefferson, so many Adams, Hancock, so many signed that paper. It was a document. It was a declaration of independence that guaranteed our freedom today. You and I have the ability to hear the word of God, to express our faith, to enjoy our families. And we have freedom today. As long as it's done properly and godly in sight of God, it's all right to express you the way you feel up or down because that's our freedom today. And we owe it all to God who through his son provided a way through which we can be saved and leave this old world when this life comes to a close. If you're here this morning, I guess maybe yesterday you shot up all your fireworks, like I was maybe eat up all the hamburgers, you know. But even today, if you have another little get together with your family, whatever you do in your prayer, thanking God for the food, so forth, don't forget to thank God for America. Don't forget to thank God for America. I remember the year of our Lord very early, 1952, as I stepped off an old propeller-driven airplane in San Antonio, Texas, many, many years ago. I just got off myself and maybe a dozen other young men who had enlisted in the military. The first thing I saw was this flag there were several hundred young men who were graduating uh, on their way to where, wherever the nation decided they needed to go. And I'll never forget the, the flag, those men that saluted that flag, because it stood for something. It stood for freedom. It stood for family. And it stood for faith. So may I say to you this morning, keep the faith. Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over. And it ain't over. God will intervene and take care of his people. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for uh, this passage of scripture. Uh, we think so much, Lord, about that great declaration of independence. We've read it. Uh, and we know what's in it. And these great men of God, they were men of God who believed in this nation. They believed in the Lord. And you give them this 1,500-page document. Some great men who were believers in God, believers in that he had his hand upon this nation. And today as we, well, yesterday really as we celebrate the 244th anniversary of this great nation, we thank you so much 
for the freedoms that we enjoy. We thank you so much for our families and we thank you so much that we can apply our faith in the proper place knowing that when this life comes to a close, we've got a better place to go. As Brother Jim comes this morning, we'll sing a verse or two of an old invitational hymn on <clears throat> this birthday of America yesterday. We'll use it today. If anyone here that's not saved, and they feel they need a, a touch from heaven in their life, I pray this morning be a good morning. Step to this altar, bend their knee and bow their head. And I consider it a great honor pray with them. If they're not saved, what a great day to be saved on the birth of our nation by one day and we'll thank you for it. You've been mighty good to us. We love you so much today. and We don't maybe understand <clears throat> everything about this terrible, terrible pandemic that's come upon the world, but we know you're still on the throne and we know that you're still in charge and we know this, everything according to your precious will, will come to a satisfactory conclusion. So the thing for us to do is draw a circle, get in that circle, and keep our eyes lifted toward heaven and our back toward this present world and continue to pray and look to our Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the working power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. What page, my brother? Page 309. Be standing, if you would, 309, as we're dismissed from this place, and certainly not from the Lord. I love this particular couple of verses of without him. Think of the words as we sing. If you need prayer, God's here to help you. Without him I could do nothing. Think about it. Without him I think about it we fail. Without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Listen to these words as we sing it. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I be. Second verse. You need prayer, you come, not to me, but to the one whom I would be glad and honored to pray with you. I'd be enslaved without him, life would be a hopeless, but with Jesus, thank God. Let me just mention this. Uh, due to the fact that uh, our conferences have been called off, uh, well, sister, our clerks here, we got you a little uh, note. And not only that, uh, I talked to Tony this morning. And since we'll not be having any business meetings, well, he's going to fix up a, uh, like he always does, a little worksheet on everything has been spent, the money we've got. He'll give us a little update in the next week or two uh, since we're not having church, but just on presently on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. So keep that in mind. He's going to work that up for us. And I thought it'd be good sort of pass that out among the folks. Even though we've been 
down on our attendance. May I say this? I commend our church the way you've been given. Um, that shows you love the Lord and you love your church. God bless you for, for, for your gift. Let's ask God's blessings upon our tithes and offerings this morning as we're dismissed from this place and certainly not from his presence. Sister Debbie, it's good to have you this morning. All the way over here. Why don't you just bless our morning tithes and offerings this morning? God bless you. We appreciate you. <coughs> By the way, there's some, if you need to, some hand sanitizer, there's hand sanitizer back here. Uh, <clears throat> if you need a shot, don't forget to do that.